It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hi there, Johnny. This here is Sidewinder Wilson. Oh, well, what can I... Who did you say? Sidewinder Wilson. You know, out here in Bumswung, Oklahoma. Oh, wait a minute. You mean that old friend of Durango, Laramie Dalhart? Oh, I sure do. Unless you've forgotten it, I'm the man that helped you find Durango that time he disappeared. Sure, of course you did, Sidewinder. If it hadn't been for you, he'd never have found the old coat. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, what's on your mind? Well, if you should just happen to mosey out here to Bum Spung, well, Johnny, I think I could show you something that'd make your eyes pop out all over your head. Uh, Sidewinder, is this, uh, is this an insurance matter? Now, you don't think I'd be calling on you if it wasn't, do you? What's it all about? Well, I'll tell you when you get here. Well, now, Sidewinder, I'll be I... waiting for you at Durango's Ranch. So long, Johnny. Well, now, wait a minute. I... Sidewinder. Hmm. Bob Bailey in the intriguing adventures of a man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. With your permission, we'd like to talk shop for just a moment. CBS Radio Shop. Recently, one of the foremost publications in the broadcasting field pulled 465 critics and editors. The question, which radio network programs do you rate tops? When the answers from these 465 experts were tabulated, the final ratings were, to put it mildly, overwhelmingly one-sided. Total honors accorded CBS radio programs exceeded those of all the other networks combined. Let's put it another way. The final verdict of hundreds of critics, reviewers, and editors was that CBS radio had more top shows than all other networks put together. CBS radio was pleased, naturally, at the result of the poll, but not surprised. Great programming is no accident. It's long been a policy of this network to devote every effort to maintaining highest broadcast standards, to making sure CBS radio listeners hear the best entertainment, the most authoritative information. Whatever listening fare is for you, you can be sure you're hearing the best when you're tuned to CBS Radio. And now, Act One of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Floyd's of England, North American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Fairweather Friend matter. All of Durango's insurance was handled by Floyd's of England, so that would have to be the company that Sidewinder was talking about. Expense account item one, $1.20 for a taxi to Floyd's headquarters in Hartford in the office of George Reed. Well, this is a switch, Johnny. You're coming here. George, I just got a call from that town out in Oklahoma with the unlikely name of Bum Spung. The old Indian name, I understand. It means uh, bad spring, bad water. Yeah, it was from a friend of Durango Laramie Dalhart's, an old character by the name of Sidewinder Wilson. You know, of course, that Durango was here a few days ago. Here in Hartford, and he didn't drop in to see me? He dropped in to pay the $4,500 premium on that insurance he carries for the benefit of his niece, Carol Dalhart. He must think an awful lot of that girl. Yeah? Well, who wouldn't? What? George, that Carol's a living doll. If I were ever to think seriously of getting married, well, believe me. Well, what's the hitch? Does old Durango object? Object? Far from it. Hey, tell me, did he pay off that premium in the usual brand new $100 bill? Yes, and as usual, he peeled them off a roll that was big enough to choke a horse. <laughs> Johnny, why that man carries so much cash around with him... Now, uh, what did this fellow Wilson call you about? Sidewinder wouldn't tell me. Well, now, wait. There was a robbery murder case out there a while back in the little town of Fairweather. Oh? That's a few miles north of Enid, Oklahoma. What happened? Well, it was the messenger carrying some negotiable securities to the small bank there in Fairweather. Ah. You get stuck for insurance on both the man and the securities? Only on the messenger. The securities were returned. By whom? Well, neither the bank nor the police out there ever found out. Funny. Do you suppose that's what Sidewinder called me about? Well, there's only one way to find out, Johnny. Which is to say that Floyd's of England will pay my expenses. Oh, well, now, within reason, of course. Huh? Well, why kid about it, Johnny? That freewheeling expense oh, account of yours. Oh, sure. 
Right, you sound as though you don't trust me. Well, of course I do. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, you shouldn't. Huh? George, I'll be in touch. Expense account item 2, 97.30, transportation. The plane dropped me off at Enid, Oklahoma, shortly after 6 p.m. Item 3, $2 even for some food. Item 4, a 50-buck deposit on a drive-your-own car. I drove north on Highway 81, then, after some 27 miles and after crossing the Salt Fork of the Arkansas, which, much to my surprise, had a trickle of water in it, I turned left on the rough dirt road leading to Bum Spunk. Finally, there it was. The same two or three acres of poor, barren, sandy soil. The ramshackle house and the remains of a barn, leaning tiredly on the timbers that helped to prop it up. And out in front were the same two sad-looking cows, the old and weather-beaten horse, a friendly, mangy, toothless hound who shook himself as he got up out of the dust and proceeded to assert his authority. And I still couldn't figure why Durango, who was worth millions in oil royalties, had ever chosen to settle down in this lonely, desolate spot. And yet, thanks to Carol, his attractive niece, the inside of that huge, unpainted house was clean, modern, well-furnished. I wondered if Carol would show up. But I saw no sign of the sleek convertible she always drove. Swinging open the sagging wire gate, I wondered if the ancient Maxwell, parked at one side, belonged to Sidewinder Wilson. I didn't have to wonder for law. Hey! Hey, you crazy old coot! Sidewinder! What the Sam Hill's the matter with you? Uh, well, welcome to Bone Spoon, Johnny! Listen, you wild old character. Put that thing down or I'll start throwing some lead around myself. With that big old 38 lemon squeezer of yours? Why, you... <laughs> no, sir, Sonny. You wouldn't stand a chance. Well, now, what's the big idea? Well, I just wanted to show you that when Durango leaves me in charge of his ranch, he leaves it in good hands. And also, I wanted you to feel real welcome around here. Yeah. <laughs> now, how are you, Johnny boy? Well, still in one piece, no thanks to you. <laughs> the crazy way you and Durango have of making somebody feel welcome around here. <laughs> Where is he, by the way? Well, first he went to Hartford to pay up on his insurance. Then he flew uh, down to Washington. Oh, uh, what for? Well, to pay up on his income taxes. He uh, wanted to make sure he got them in the right hand. Well, now, he didn't have to go to Washington for that. Well, he figures it makes it easier that way. He just carries along a big bundle of money and lets them take whatever they think <laughs> is right. Oh, no. Now, listen, Sidewinder. Yeah? Did you call me in connection with that bank messenger who was killed down in Fairweather? That's right, Judge. I understand the securities he carried were returned to the bank. Yes, sir. They were sealed up in a big envelope and laid on the front doorstep of that bank. And what I figure, Johnny... You figure that if I can find out who sent them back the securities, I'll have a lead on the killer. That's right. And, Johnny, I know who sent them back. You do? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Well, who, Sidewinder? Me, Johnny. What? Yes, sir. Me. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Are you going to write that letter today or put it off until tomorrow, or maybe the day after? How about that spring suit you plan to have altered? Will you take it to the tailor tomorrow morning bright and early, or will the week somehow glide by while the suit just hangs on in your closet? If you're a confessed procrastinator, you're not unique. The putting off habit can be mild or chronic, but some matters, serious matters, are highly dangerous to assign to manana. One of the most important of these is getting protection from crippling, killing polio. When life-saving soft vaccine was first introduced in 1955, it was hailed as a major medical discovery. Yet at the beginning of this current year, some 98 million Americans, the majority of our population, had not received even one inoculation. Why had all these people failed to take the simple measures necessary to gain protection from polio? If you were among them, this year, don't take a chance. Don't put off those polio shots any longer. Get in touch with your family doctor or local health department right away. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Fairweather Friend Matter. Come on in the house, Johnny, and I'll tell you about it. Now, just let me get this straight, Sidewinder. Huh? The 
The bank messenger down there in Fairweather was held up and murdered. Yeah? The securities he carried were stolen by the killer. Then they were returned to the bank. That's right. And I'm the one who returned them. Sidewinder, you... Now, look. Don't tell me that you're the one. Me? Do you think that I'm the one to kill that messenger? I didn't say that. But that's what you were thinking, ain't it? Well, you said yourself that whoever returned those I securities... I said whoever left them back at the bank. No. Just you stand real still, Johnny. Oh, come on now. Put that thing down, Sidewinder. Don't you move, none. Look, will you listen to me? And maybe you even better stop talking or that Sidewinder rattlesnake coming toward you might take it into his huh? head to... Easy now. Oh, yeah. I can hear him. Easy now, whilst I get a bead on him with this study. A bead. Right in one eye, not to that. And I'll just cut off his rattles and add them to my collection. Oh, brother, thanks. No wonder they called you Sidewinder. Yeah. That's the 427th rattles I've taken off these uh, formants. I just don't like them, Johnny. They ain't like Diamondback. These sidewinders around here will sneak up on a man. Just like that dirty sneak that killed the bank messenger. And you know why he done it, Johnny? You still haven't told me who he is. It was to collect that insurance on him, that's who. Oh? Yes, sir. The man that killed him was his hair. What you call his venue fishier. How do you know, Sidewinder? Because I lived on the fair weather. That is, when I ain't up here looking after Durango's place. Yeah? And that's how come I knowed that Claude Needles, that was a messenger, left his insurance to that no-count nephew of his and that Barney Gifford. Uh, sit down. Barney Gifford, huh? Yeah. So what I done was talk it over with Durango and Carol Dalhart. Where is Carol, Sidewinder? <laughs> I've been waiting for you to ask that, Johnny. Oh, she'll be around. Good. You're kind of sweet on her, ain't you? Wow. Now, nah, don't you try to fool me, Johnny boy. And you know how she feels about you, too. And if and you don't think Durango knows, well, I'll tell you this. You say you talked it over with me. I'll tell you this, Johnny. Durango finds that you've been out here and went back to Hartford without hitching up with Carol. Sidewinder, would well, you... Well, I'll tell you this. He's liable to shotgun you into it if he catches you around here. Oh. And don't you try to tell me you wouldn't like being married to her, too. Sidewinder. Okay, okay. So, anyhow, me and Durango and Carol... Carol! Hi, Johnny. Oh, I'm glad to see Carol, you. Carol, I... I'm glad to see you. Oh, then don't you stand there. Give me a kiss. Oh, you think I need an engraved invitation? Uh, Come here. Uh, mm. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, don't stop, Johnny. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if the wrangle could see this. Oh, drop that side. Uh -huh. Yes, sir, he'd have that shotgun out so fast. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's been an awful long time, John. Oh, too long. I thought you were never coming back here. I'm here. Uh huh. So let's make up for lost time. Oh, why not? Oh, oh come on now. Come on, you kid. Oh, it's good to see you. Johnny, don't you want to hear the rest of what I was... Yeah. Now, 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 look here. If you don't cut loose from each other there, you know what I'll do. I'll walk right out of here, and I'll go back fair with it. And, and, and I'll send a telegram to old Durango, and I'll tell him you two are making out like a, this all alone inside his house. And if that don't bring him out here to get you two married... Oh, why don't you mind your own business? Well, I can't... I, I, I you can't. old goat. Why don't you go somewhere and get lost? But it's... That... That does it. I, I, I'm, I'm going right down to Fairweather and send him a telegram. Oh, no, no, no. Just settle down there, Sidewinder. I'll settle down, Johnny. With you. Any time... Any place. Oh, Carol, you're the only girl I know who makes me wish sometimes I was the marrying kind. But now listen. I'll bet I can make you the marrying kind, Johnny. You like to give me a chance, huh? Hey, that settles it. I'm leaving right now. No, you aren't, Sidewinder. Oh, let him go. Let's just be sensible for a minute, will I you? was trying to, Johnny. I mean about this murder case. And when we finish talking about it? We'll see. Well, then let me tell you about it. It won't take me so long. And Sidewinder, you stop making those silly eyes or I'll let you have one right between them. Well, I still think I ought to leave. So do I. But as long as you're already... Well, well listen, Johnny. I'm listening. When Mr. Needles was killed, Sidewinder wanted them to make him a cop down there in Fairweather. Or even just a deputy, so as I could go out and hunt for that killer. 
Claude Needles was a friend of mine. But the police said no, they didn't need him, didn't want him. So that made me sure. So we talked it over about who could ever do a thing like that. And that's when I remembered Barney Gifford would get the money from Claude's insurance. Well, I told Sidewinder I'd have a date with Barney, and that would give him a chance to go through Barney's house and look for the security. Uh, and I found him, Johnny, under a loose board in the floor. Yes. So when he come home, I lassoed him, and I tied him up, and I took him and locked him up in the tool shed on my place. You didn't turn him over to the police? Oh, the chief in that little old hick town told Sidewinder that if he interfered in the case, he'd lock him up. That's what he said. Well, look, nevertheless, and that's I... when Durango, just before he left to go to Hartford, always has to be there right on time, you know, with that insurance payment. Yeah, I know. Well, that's when Durango said to call you up on the phone. Yeah. Sidewinder. Huh? I thought that was your idea. No, Durango's. And also for getting Johnny out here to see you again. What? Why, sure. <laughs> well, who does Durango think he is trying to run my life that way? What kind of a trick is that to pull on? Just you wait until he gets back here. Is that my cue to leave these parts, Carol? Well, it certainly... Oh, no, of course not, Johnny, but... Well... All right, now. Sidewinder, where is this Barney Gifford? Locked up in my tool shed. Well, who's looking after him? Oh, well, Pete Willie, I told him not to let on to the police. You sure he can handle a man like Gifford? Oh, yes, Sidewinder. Well, I don't see why Hey, not. look, maybe we'd better drive on down there. Well, sure, sure, but wait till I answer that phone. It's probably Durango saying to hold on to you, Johnny. That's... He's probably on his way. If that's Durango, you tell him I've left. Hello? Now, you don't mean that, huh? Johnny. Mm -hmm. I bet Durango really would what? make you marry me. Oh, Carol. Would that be so bad? Hmm. Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Carol. Oh, why don't you stay on that... Sidewinder, what's the matter? Listen. That, that was old Pete. Yeah? Barney got loose. Like to kill old Pete. Oh, no. And now Barney's coming here. Coming for me. To kill me. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Be sociable. Look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refresh. drop in, let your hospitality show you're sociable in the modern manner. Pepsi, you know, is the favorite of the smart and young at heart. Have you tried a Pepsi lately? And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Okay, then, if Barney Gifford's coming here, we'll be ready for him. We'll... Sidewinder, you aren't afraid of him, are you? He's a bad one, Johnny. But if Sidewinder was able to subdue him before... Well, I, I caught him off guard, Johnny. He didn't have no gun then, but he has now. He took old Pete. And Barney's a deadly shot. It's the only good thing you can say about him. And don't you see, it's dark outside now. If we stay around here inside the house, we'll be like a flock of sitting ducks. Yeah, but I don't think we'll stay inside. You mean we'll just run away from him? No, no. How long ago did he get away from Pete? Well, Pete says it was more than an hour ago. Then we haven't any time to waste. What are you going to do, Johnny? I know what you're going to do, Carol. Yeah? Get out of here. Go on back to Enid. Tell the police. By the time they can get up here, Sidewinder and I will either have things under control or, well, then they can take over. Why don't you phone the police? Because I'm telling you to go on down there. You're just trying to get me away from here, aren't you? That's right. No, Johnny. I can shoot just as good as you and Sidewinder, and there's plenty of guns in the back room. No, Carol, that doesn't make any difference. You think I'm going to leave you here with a killer after old Sidewinder, and if Barty finds you with him, he'll try to kill you, Carol, too? Carol, will you just... I won't go, Johnny. I won't leave you. Okay, yet. okay. We're just wasting time. I haven't seen any car lights out on the road, but that doesn't mean that... That's right, mister. It doesn't mean a thing. Damn. The 
front door had been pushed open by the barrel of a high-powered rifle that slowly fanned the three of us. I knew that if I made a move to draw my handgun, if Sidewinder took a step toward his 30-30 on the table, and if Barney was the excellent shot that Carol said he was... All right. Put your hands up and come walking out this door. Listen, Shut Barney, up, get the... do like I say. Come on, Carol. Sidewinder. Come on. Come on, don't try anything. All right, Barney. Not so brave now that I got the advantage, are you, Sidewinder? All right. If you got to kill somebody, kill me. You leave them alone. Now that they know all about me? No, sir. I'm going to kill all of you like I killed old Pete. Now, stop. You keep your dirty hands off of me, you... Keep them up, Carol. So you're not carrying a gun. I know that Sidewinder never carries it. But you do, don't you, mister? Thanks. And I think I'll use it to kill you. So if you want to put your hands down to pray... Well, Sidewinder? Yes, Johnny? You think maybe this is retribution for that killing you did today? Killing, Johnny? Yeah, when I first got here. You remember. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, mister. But I'm not going to waste any time. Barney, Shut please, up, just... Carol. You're going to go first. All right, now listen, Gifford. And you, mister. And last of all, side one. Huh? What's that? It's a snake. It's a rattler. It's back up, you side one. No. No. It's over next to Barney. Where? Where? I can't see it. Where is it? I'll kill it. Where is it? Right here. Oh. Oh. But that... That snake... Oh, thanks, Sidewinder. I'm sure... I'm sure glad I saved these rattles, Johnny. What? Yeah, so am I. But I never would have remembered them if you hadn't reminded me about killing that snake. You know something? I hated to leave that place. To leave Carol is what I really mean. But there was another phone call. Sidewinder answered it. And yep, it was from Durango, phoning from Enid. Durango was so tickled to learn I was still around that he promised to come out to the ranch as fast as he could. Yes, yeah, sir, just as soon as he can pick up the preacher. Sidewinder. Well, much as I love that gal. Well, expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford and mileage on the rental car, 203.50. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Be careful. You're going to land in a bathtub. Who's driving this flying saucer, you or me? Well, what do you see? Oh, germs. Millions and millions of germs. Sure, here on Earth, disease, germs, and viruses live in bathrooms. Wait, here comes a lady. She's putting a dash of Lysol in with those suds, and she's mopping the floor. Wow, look at those germs and viruses drop dead. Boy, are you stupid. I thought all Martians knew that Lysol brand disinfectant kills disease germs and many deadly viruses on contact. Disinfects from one cleaning to the next as nothing else can. That's right. I remember my seven grandmothers saying Lysol makes your favorite cleaner work better, including many that claim to sanitize. I'm sorry you learned to speak English by listening to commercials. And Lysol comes in regular or pine fragrance for as little as 29 cents. How much is that Martian money? Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week? Well, getting away from Durango Laramie Dalhart isn't as easy as you might think. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Junius Matthews, G. Stanley Jones, James McCallion, and Bill James. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Suspense is next over the CBS Radio Network. W-O-W, Albany, New York. Ten, ten, ten.
Yes, 10 hours of price-shattering bargains at Henry S. Mantell Furniture, 343 River Street, Troy. This merchandise must be sold at once, at savings to you of up to 87%. Mantell's was unable to extend their Latham store lease, so the stock from the Latham store has been moved to Mantell's main store in Troy. Save on famous brand merchandise, Haywood Wakefield, Crayler, Simmons, Norge, Motorola, and many more. Buy a 339.95 two-piece living room suite for $199.95. Or a 34.95 famous make inner spring mattress for $17.88. Or a modern bedroom set, regularly $259.95, now $139.95. This tremendous sale at Henry S. Mantell Furniture begins Monday, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Tuesday, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. The store will be closed during the day to mark down merchandise and arrange stock. Remember, there's no money down at Henry S. Mantel Furniture, 343 River Street, Troy.